good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Thursday, April 13th, 2023. And our top story today, caring for children with food allergies. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Kenneth Mendez is the Chief Executive Officer and President of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Kenny, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you. Kenny, uh, I want to talk, we're, we want to talk this morning about food allergies and, and based on some of my reading and reading about the, from your organization, it looks as though for children, the number of children subjected to food allergies is, is growing ex exponentially. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I am president and CEO of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America and within AFA, which is our acronym, we have a division called Kids with Food Allergies, KFA. Uh, and we are seeing that one in 13 kids have some sort of food allergy. If you look at all Americans, adult Americans, there are about 100 million Americans who are touched by some sort of allergy, whether it's not specifically food allergy, but uh, seasonal allergies, that kind of thing. But certainly with food allergies, one in 13 kids have had food allergy, and that does seem to be growing in particular in black populations. And, and Kenny, is it a particular food? Uh, you know, we've been hearing a lot about celiac disease, you know, everything that you, you go into a restaurant now and everything, there's a gluten-free menu. Uh, is it a, you know, some people are allergic to nuts. Some people are allergic to dairy, eggs. Is there a particular food or food type that yeah, these children I, are are allergic to? I, I think it's really important for people to understand the difference in food allergies in a food intolerance. So something like a food intolerance, and, and I, I can tell you that the um, the burdens of disease and navigating foods are, are, are just as heavy depending upon which one you have. But a, a, an intolerance is something like lactose intolerance, gluten intolerance. Uh, a food allergy, and there are nine food, food allergens by law by the FDA, and you have to label for those. You could be allergic to those nine food allergens, and that is a, a systemic immune system reaction, uh, which can actually cause anaphylaxis and death if you don't have uh, epinephrine nearby. So there's a difference between a food intolerance and a food allergy which is uh, related to the nine allergens that are listed in the United States. And if I see my child having, or my grandchild, or, or my cousin having some distress, how do you determine if someone is allergic to uh, you know, a particular food? I mean, is there a specific doctor that you go to? Uh, do you run specific tests? Yeah, what we really encourage people to do is to see uh, an allergist, a board certified allergist. That's the person who's going to be able to diagnose uh, your allergic disease. So they will do some form of testing in their office and they'll determine what the triggers are and how allergic you are to those various allergens, food allergens. Let's talk about caregiving because many of the people that watch this program, they may be, as I said, parents, grandparents. Uh, maybe they watch children on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of burden there for caregivers um, to take care of these children, many of whom are not even 16, 17, 18 years of old age. They can't even take care of themselves. Yeah, a a absolutely. And I, and I can tell you, we, we did a report called My Life with Food Allergies, which talks about the burden of, of, of disease. And uh, it really does fall on the caregivers. And I have to be honest, one of the reasons why I have this job is that two of my three kids have had severe food allergies. And when they, they're in their 30s now, but when they were young, once you're diagnosed with a food allergy, you need to know how to put a meal on the table. You need to know how to navigate a play date, uh, how to navigate the school system. And all that is really challenging. That's one of the things that we do as a nonprofit. We provide that support network, the trusted uh, information and, and support for those with food allergies. Yeah, I was going to ask you in our last question before we go to a commercial break. Uh, how do as a if if my child or someone that I'm a caregiver for is now uh, determined to be diagnosed with a food allergy? Uh, you just outlined a couple of the steps. I mean, I got to think about schooling. I got to make sure that they don't take the school lunch. If they do get the school lunch, does it have alert allergens in it? Uh, you know, do, what about if they go sleep over a buddy's house? 
Uh, these are things that I can't even imagine how you get put the guardrails up. Yeah, that's what's really challenging. And that's what we do as an organization. I mean, I, I could think of my own family, uh, you know, if my kids were going to go over to my parents' house, you know, the grand grandparents, the grandparents have to know how to navigate this. So within your own family, people have to understand that. But then when you go outside your family, it's really important to understand how to navigate that. So we have advice on our website, you know, bring your own snacks. You don't want your child to feel excluded. You want them to be feel part of things. It's very much part of what food is and socializing and family. So uh, it's really important for them to feel included, but to have those guardrails. And you can find some of those on our website uh, at kidswithfoodallergykfa.org. Kenny, as I said, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about treatment and a lot more with food allergies. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Invesco's latest Show Me the Income study reflects on the evolving retirement industry today as it faces the pressing need to help participants turn their defined contribution plan savings into long-term retirement income. Key findings from the research uncover that nearly seven in 10 participants fear running out of money in retirement. And only 22% were very confident they could create a retirement income strategy on their own. What can employers do to help? To learn more about the study and request the white paper, visit Invesco.com slash retirement income or contact your Invesco DC professional. Cited research is based on Invesco's work with Greenwald Research. Invesco is not affiliated with Greenwald Research. Invesco Advisors, Inc. is an investment advisor that provides investment advisory and does not sell securities. Invesco Distributors, Inc. is the U.S. distributor for Invesco's retail products and private placements. Both are indirect wholly owned subsidiaries of Invesco Limited. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and called Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Kenny Mendez. He's the president and chief executive officer of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Kenny, thanks so much for sticking around with us for segment number two this morning. 
Great. This has been uh, really terrific. Thanks. Yeah, this is this is really important. And as you said, so many Americans, so many people around the world have these allergens. It's even if you if you know about it, it's important to reinforce what you should do. You talked about the guardrails in, in the in the first segment, but let's talk about, God forbid, that someone has an allergic reaction. What should you keep on hand? Should a child that you're providing caregiving for or your child in general, or they go to school, what, what do they need to have with them to prevent going into anaphylaxis shock? Great. I, I, I'm so glad you're asking these, these questions. The most important thing after you see your specialist, your allergy specialist, is to make sure that uh, if you have uh, food allergies and allergic reaction uh, and diagnosed with that, you have epinephrine with them, uh, with your you and uh, epinephrine auto injector. Uh, some people call them EpiPens, but um, uh -huh. it's kind of like scotch tape, you know, that, that's what they've been known for, but they're called epinephrine auto injectors. So having epinephrine on you and carrying it with you all the time is really important. The interesting thing about that as a parent, you know, when you first get into this, you can navigate this, you get used to it, you get into a rhythm and you make sure that your kid has it with you all the time, has it with them all the time. You're talking to other parents, they're practice injectors so you know how to use them. Your child is aware of them. But then the funny thing is, as they get older, and my kids now are in their, their uh, late 20s, uh, they get lax about carrying them. When you think about when the kids leave the house and they go to college, in other words, you worry about them carrying their auto injectors. The good news is that there are various technologies that are coming out now for uh, delivery of that uh, epinephrine. There's one intranasal spray that's up before the FDA where you could squirt something in your nose. So it makes it far less cumbersome to carry these. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that uh, are really important. But the single most important thing if you have a food allergy is to have your epinephrine with you all the time because you don't know if you're gonna have cross-contamination. There's no downside to injecting the uh, epinephrine in case you feel like you've had an allergic reaction. Are, are school systems prepared for this? So, you know, I, I have been to the nurse uh, as a young boy. Um, you know, they had the, the temperature, took, they took your temperature, you sat down if you didn't feel well. Uh, I would imagine that nurses and, and uh, the people that treat uh, children in, inside the schools probably have some idea about what this is. And do they have, have EpiPens there? Yeah, we, we hope so. In, you know, in some school districts that they, they have them, they have laws passed for, for people to have auto injectors in the classrooms. You know, one of the challenges in the schools now is when I was younger, you know, there was a school nurse in every school. And now there's not a school nurse in every school. There's a staffing shortage of that. So it's important for everyone to have training, understand what the symptoms are, and have that epinephrine nearby. I mean, in theory, your child should be able to go to school with the epinephrine in their backpack and on their person so they don't have to wait to go to a school nurse to have it administered. Sometimes they will have you in a school, give it to the school nurse. But uh, you know what we always recommend is make sure that, that, that the teacher in the classroom and the child has the epinephrine uh, so they could get as quickly as possible. Uh, Kenny, you mentioned some of the newer technologies, the nasal spray, then the less invasiveness, you don't have to stick yourself or get stuck with it. I'm always afraid of needles. Um, but, but what about wearable devices and other technologies, I guess, to monitor whether or not something's happening with your heart. I, you know, so much is talked about with uh, medical practitioners about some of this newer technology. You know, we're carrying a, a, basically a computer in our pockets with the phones. Maybe the kids don't all do it, but you could have a watch. You could have something that would maybe monitor some of that. Sure. I mean, I, I would say it's a little bit different, not monitoring the heart, but there are apps out there. There are things you could do to understand ingredients, for example, because it's really important to get comfortable with reading labels and understanding what you're buying and what's in the food that you're eating. So that's really important. And I know that there are apps, some apps out there in, in development that will help you navigate through that. So that's what's really important. I think there are some treatments that are coming up that are uh, meant to desensitize you. So for example, against peanuts, so there's a, a patch that you could put on your skin that delivers a small amount of peanut protein to your child uh, over time, which will reduce their uh, reaction to peanuts and, and give you some peace of mind. So that hasn't been approved by the FDA yet, but we uh, 
we think that it'll, it'll be approved sometime in the next year and a half or two years. And there's also oral immunotherapy, which uh, there's a, a drug where it's peanut powder. And again, you have to see a specialist for this, where you can take uh, doses of peanuts and you build that up peanut powder in, in your system. But you have to do that. Both these are done under an allergist supervision. The first one is approved by, or the second one's approved by the FDA, the peanut powder. There's also stuff that's off label where some al allergists will do oral immunotherapy, but that's not been approved by the FDA. And we, we generally recommend that people see a specialist uh, and use FDA approved products. Last question, Kenny, uh, you, you mentioned the FDA and I, we're all familiar with nutrition labels. I mean, you can't go into a store now to buy grocery uh, groceries uh, for your home without looking at the labels. Are we doing enough in terms of food allergies? How does the FDA taking the appropriate steps to make sure the manufacturers are putting, um, doing what they should be doing in terms of labeling, but also when they're creating these foods that, you know, there's not peanuts going in my chocolate, but maybe that, maybe that already exists with like a Kit Kat, but you know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, probably the FDA is not doing enough. We, we need to create a specific standard. So, and we need to do more research. So we know what the triggering amounts are for allergens, whether it's uh, peanuts, whether it's shellfish, milk, you know, there are nine allergens all, all together. Uh, and so we need to do a lot more research around that. So when you look at a label, you'll know how much is in there and what's safe for you or not to eat. Because in general, what most people do is they will exclude foods. So it gets very expensive, it limits your amount of food, and for certain communities when there are food deserts and no grocery stores available, then it limits the food choices for certain populations. So that's really um, why having better labeling from the FDA would be really important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kenny, we're gonna have to leave it there. Certainly not enough time, but just enough time to unpack it. We, we appreciate you coming on the program and we look forward to having you back again very soon. Great. Thank you. Look forward to that. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, somebody you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest charity news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more and all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, or visit our website and, of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget... Roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Tax audits, tax liens, wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. 
If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The Tax Relief Line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The Tax Relief Line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free.